know your product. And see, from the very beginning, I, I ripped out the gas out of my, home, my own home uh -huh. and put in geothermal heat pumps. Why? Because how credible would I be if I'm at their home selling on, on a ground source heat pump and they ask me what I use at my house and I say, gas. I doubled the size of my house last year. Put in a Climate Master geothermal heat pump, my bills went down. My house is twice as big. It's the real deal. Well, the program we're really here to talk about today is the Geothermal Loop Program, which we affectionately refer to as the GoGo Geo Program. And you're right, we're very excited at Caddo because uh, we've already launched, even though the, uh, the official launch isn't until January, we've already begun, and we're on loop number 13 already. So uh, it is exciting times at, at Caddo. all the associated costs of providing service, there's a customer charge for it. Well, we got to thinking that if we provided a loop service for the geothermal heat pump system, not only would that remove a huge amount of upfront cost on the customer, but uh, if we charge them a small fee per month from now on to use it, then that would actually be cheaper in the long run than if they financed it themselves. Well, depending on the size of the, of the unit that's installed in the home, um, the loop cost, the loop portion of the total geothermal installation is normally anywhere from six to $12,000. And so, in effect, that's the amount of money that they no longer have to come up with up front in order to install geothermal, six to $12,000. We're, we're doing it as a fixed monthly fee, and it is just a thermal energy charge. We're not metering the amount of water that goes through the loop to try to determine uh, how, many, how many kilowatt hours of, uh, of heat that is, is absorbed from the loop or how many kilowatt hours of heat is dissipated into the loop. It's just a set fee. If you think about it, we actually sell the customer kilowatt hours now. They use those kilowatt hours with conventional equipment to transfer heat to and from the outdoor air. Well now, in exchange for fewer kilowatt hours, we're charging them for the, the access to a, a unit that can actually give them more kilowatt hours of heat and cooling dissipation than they could get from a standard system. Well, it's absolutely 100% demand-side management, which leads to providing the lowest cost to our customers. Um, there's only one component of our energy cost that we have any control over, and that is demand. The other two components of, of uh, our cost of power are energy and fuel. We don't control the cost of natural gas or coal or hydro or any of that stuff. We don't control the cost of uh, the generation at the, at the facilities. All of that stuff is outside of our control. However, we can control demand, and geothermal heat pumps represent at least a 25 to 30 percent reduction in demand over conventional equipment. So very naturally, when we replace an existing system with a geothermal, we have just reduced demand, and that reduced demand impacts average wholesale cost of power, which in turn impacts retail cost of power. All of our power is purchased in one lump sum from our power supplier, Western Farmers. The amount of demand and the amount of uh, generation capacity and fuel and energy is all rolled into one. And then basically, and this is oversimplifying it, but basically that is spread to all kilowatt hours that we then sell. Well, if we reduce the amount that we start with, the amount that we spread becomes lower. And so the resulting impact on every single consumer, whether they participate in our programs or not, is a reduced rate. Our utility service um, on many accounts during that 30 year period that we talked about earlier depreciated may not return the whole uh, cost of the, uh, of the investment in that 30 year period. Simply because, uh, as an example, we, we have many, many homes out there, thousands of them as a matter of fact, that use electric air conditioning in the summer and then heat with gas or heat their hot water with gas uh, throughout the rest of the year. 
So they put a demand on us in the summer and then use nothing to offset it for the rest of the year. Therefore, the margin to the cooperative is non-existent. And therefore, the 30-year um, investment in plant is likely to not ever pay off. However, geothermal uses our product winter, summer, and some shoulder months when there's slight heating or cooling. It makes that consumer that is demand hungry now um, less demand hungry, but also keeps them eating all year long, which, which levels out the, the cost of power. The geothermal heating and cooling system is hands down the most economical form of heating and cooling for a home today. I don't care how, how inexpensively you're buying your gas, how inexpensively you're buying your propane. Electric geothermal heating and cooling will win the battle. Well, the Hargis' um, situation kind of came up by accident. Um, they were on a rural gas utility, and that rural gas utility had to close down th their gas service. And so they were given a certain amount of time to make a change. They, they had an option of either going propane or going all electric. They called me up, wanted me to come out and explain the different, uh, uh, the different options for them. So it just so happened we had, we had just a, several days before approved our new loop program. So I was able to take to them a brand new deal, explain it to them in, in a way that they could understand it because they'd never been exposed to geothermal before, and they liked it. They thought it sounded like a great idea. Um, so once I explained to them our rebates, in addition to the, the, uh, uh, the no loop costs, as well as their 30% tax credit from the federal government, as well as applying the money they received from the outgoing gas utility, they were able to purchase a geothermal heat pump, a four-ton system, for about $2,000 less than they would have purchased a high-efficiency air source heat pump. Well, if you ask Kenneth, he'll smile from ear to ear, when it, and he'll tell you that his savings for the last three months have been pretty outstanding. To give you an example, uh, July of this year, 2012, their electric bill was $130 cheaper than their electric bill from the same month in 2011. But there's one other key factor to re remember. They put in an electric water heater, whereas before they had gas. And the gas bill in the same month last year was $35. So in effect, their utility costs were $165 for one month less than they were the same time period last year. And since that time, in August, they saved $105, and then the bill that they received in September, which was for August usage, was another $120 cheaper. So in three months, almost $400. But we are estimating that we'll see about 30, at least about 30% reduction in the demand represented at the Hargis' home. Um, may even see more than that. We just have to, we'll just have to see. But either way, there's no question, the cooperative does reduce its kilowatt hour sales in the summer. But that's okay, because we're increasing them at off-peak times in the winter and the, and the other months, the shoulder months. And that has more of a margin impact on Caddo Electric than selling kilowatt hours at peak. Putting, putting the energy aspect of this whole thing aside, our number one goal is to make sure that Kenneth and Rosella have a system in their home that, they, that makes them comfortable, that they're happy with, that they never question their investment on, and at the same time, um, we are successfully able to give them their, their heating and cooling at a rate that they can afford. The demand reduction programs that Caddo Electric is involved in, of which the LOOP program is, is a major player, are currently keeping our members' rates two and a half million dollars a year cheaper than they would be if we were not participating. Like the time when the, when the lights came on, um, technically this is the time when the heat comes on. You know, now people have an option or a, a way provided by their co-op to provide something in their home that they've never had access to before. And 
they provide it on their own terms. They can choose to have our program or they can choose not to. And so that's basically a menu for our, our members to choose from uh, and our, every program we've got. It's, it's like a menu. You go in, you choose the items out of it that you want and you ignore the ones that you don't. It is absolutely a hedge to the future. With all the regulation that's coming down, there is absolutely no question that the cost of power will go up. Regardless of what type of fuel it is, the cost of power will go up. Now for our members, because we've been so successful with our demand control programs, the impact of that increase is going to be far less than the impact on other utilities. So without a doubt, it's a hedge. That is the most critical aspect of geothermal heating and cooling. You have to bury a series of loops in the ground. You have to replace the uh, indoor equipment with new indoor equipment. You have to run um, the, the water lines and so forth. It's not a system that gets put in in one day. As a matter of fact, sometimes uh, putting a system in can take a week. Depending on how busy the loop contractor is, it might take two weeks. So if a customer waits until their existing system falls apart, goes out, and that's usually on a 105 degree day, how patient are they likely to be to wait to get that new system? So what we've tried to do to satisfy as many of those situations as we can is we've made arrangements with uh, equipment suppliers to have temporary cooling towers that enable us in a day's time to go out and at least change out the, the heat pump equipment and connect it to a temporary cooling tower so that they can have cooling in their house at least no longer than two days. And that way, if, if the loop takes another week to, to uh, put in, then uh, they, we've at least bought them some time. Now, first and foremost, we want to try to convince everybody, don't wait until it breaks. Yes, we have. Um, we have one large developer, uh, we have more than one, but we have one specifically up in the uh, South Yukon uh, area called Ideal Homes. And Ideal Homes uh, came to us about two months ago uh, when, when they heard what we were considering doing with our loop program. They came to us and said, we have a marketing idea that we want to talk to you about. So after several meetings, they decided that uh, uh, they had to them the, the primo marketing opportunity for their homes. Because people nowadays are looking for green homes or at least those that, that have smaller carbon footprints, they feel like if they build all of their remaining homes in our service area uh, with geothermal, because it's a green power, that will give them an edge over other developers in that market. And it has. And it's been so overwhelming that they've decided to build all 270 remaining homes in their housing addition as geothermal heating and cooling. And those homes formerly would have been gas heated and gas hot water. But today they're all electric, geothermal with hot water assist. And that's, that's a big, big thing for both them and for Cattle Electric. Because remember earlier I said those gas electric homes those are a no margin situation for the cooperative. They do not return their investment. Now these will at the same time that they've reduced the overall energy cost for the customer. So it's win, win, win. Ideal wins, the customer wins, and the co-op wins. The, the fact is, it is so much more efficient and there's so much fewer pollutants in the air because of reduced plant emissions because of reduced freon emissions uh, and all the things associated with the delivery of cool air. There's no question it is a visible physical impact on our planet.